<clears throat> today's readings take us to the poor and the needy of society. Elijah is sent by God to a poor widow with a son who has nothing. She has no food. She has no money. She has nothing. And God sends Elijah and says, Go, she will feed you. So Elijah goes. And he says to the woman, he says, Bring me a morsel of bread to eat. And she says, Well, I don't have anything to give you. I have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil and I was going to make my son and myself a little cake of bread to eat and then we would die. And Elijah says, Be not afraid. Go make the bread. <clears throat> Go make the bread. And bring it. And we'll eat. For God said that your flour will not run out, your oil will not run out if you do this. So she goes and does it. And sure enough, her flour and her oil did not run out until the rains hit again and the earth was renewed. Jesus sitting by the door of the, the, of the synagogue, of the temple, watched people come in and drop in their tithes, their offerings to God. And he saw the rich come in and drop in two, three dollars grudgingly. Well, I've got to pay the tax again. got to put in my little dime, put in my nickel, put in my dollar. Whatever. What do they ever do for me? Because in those days there was a temple tax they had to pay. A little old woman comes in, intent upon coming in to worship God, and she puts into the offertory bucket two mites, two coins, two little pennies, amongst all those big bills that the rich have given. Amongst all the huge denominations of coins that the rich have put in. And Jesus says, this woman is an example because she gave everything she had for the service of God. Her entire livelihood, every mite, every dime she had, she put in that offertory plate. And she did so happily. Not like the others who had grumbled. I don't know why you're going to pay this tax again. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, she put it in happily and went about to pray and praise God. <clears throat> We've been through one of the dirtiest and darkest elections in recent memory. And one of the big issues this entire election cycle that seemed to never end was the poor, the needy, those who had nothing, those who needed help and assistance from the church and from government. And a lot of vile things were said about them, about how they're lazy or they're worthless or they're useless or they don't have... We shouldn't be funding them because they're not worth our time or money.
But many of these people have nothing. They don't have any extra money. They don't have the ability to run out and buy a loaf of bread without the government's help. Or without our help, the church's help. And yet, we are willing to turn our backs on them. Well, they're not productive members of society. But who stands up for them? When we come in into plush churches and in plush cars and plush houses with all of our fancy gadgets and TVs and computers and everything else, the person across the street can't buy food or medicine, can't keep their electricity on or the water running. And then we come into God's house and we grumble. Why should I have to give a tithe? Why should I have to support the poor? Somebody comes to the door and knocks on the door. Mr. So-and-so, we're with the United Way, or we're with Habitat for Humanity, or we're with the Baptist Church down the street, and we're raising money for food for the poor. Go away! I pay taxes. When it's all said and done, and our lives draw to a close, we're not going to be remembered for the number of cars sitting in our driveway, for the size of our house, for the number of computers or televisions we had. We're going to be remembered for how we helped our fellow man. Nobody had statues built to them for having a hundred TVs in their home or five cars in the driveway. We have to be willing to help the least of those. And those who have nothing, God's message to you is simple. Be not afraid. Trust in His providence. That doesn't mean sit on your butt and do nothing. Oh, God will drop a loaf of bread in my lap if I sit here long enough. I've had friends in the past. Oh, God will send me the right woman if I just sit here. Well, it's like the guy in the hurricane. The hurricane came, the waters rose, his house was flooded up to the roof level, and he's sitting on top of the roof, and a boat comes by. He, he's praying, and he says, God, help me, save me. A boat comes by with a bunch of rescuers in. Come on, get in, get in. I'm waiting for God to save me. A yacht comes by with some rich people on it partying. Uh, come on, get on, we'll save you. No, I'm waiting for God to save me. And finally the waters crest, and he's swept off the roof and dies. And he stands before Almighty God, and he says, God, why didn't you save me? And he says, I sent you a boat and a yacht. What more did you want? Be not afraid, for God will provide. Sometimes we have to look for it and seek it out. To those of us, God has blessed with enough, with plenty. It is our responsibility to not sit and go, well, I'll help the poor when they come to me. They should have to get off their butts and come ask me. No, it is our responsibility to get off our butts and to go search them out and help them. Some people can't come to you. Okay, it might be pride or ego. 
but it also might be health. You might not have a car to drive across town to, or money for the bus or a cab to come ask you for help. So it's on you to get up and go help them. This week, as we near Advent and Christmas and Thanksgiving, let us pray that God illuminate those times in our lives when we have opportunities to help others out. It might be something as simple as standing in the grocery line and the little old lady ahead of you just doesn't quite have enough money. Instead of going, why won't the old bag just move? Instead, pull out your wallet. How much do you need? Here, it's on me. God bless you. Some of the Occupy Wall Street people have announced this week they're going to start buying up bad debt that people owe. Bundles of bad debt sold off by creditors and collection agencies. What are they going to do with it? Are they going to start banging on people's doors? Pay me my money. No, they're buying it up and then dissolving it. That's right. They're buying it up and then saying, you don't owe me anything. Your debt's paid. That's what the church should be doing. That's what society needs to be doing to help each other out to raise the poor up, to break the cycle that continues to be perpetrated every single day where the poor are ignored and abused and left out. We must begin to help them pull themselves up because they cannot do it without some help. Many can't. If you were able to, God bless you. But I've been there. I've been poor. And I had a dime to my name with a small baby and no idea how we were going to pay for formula or diapers. And we didn't pull ourselves up by our bootstraps because we didn't have bootstraps to pull ourselves up with. People helped us. And if it were not for them, we wouldn't be here today. So pray that God illuminate those opportunities you had to help others to be God's hands and heart to those who need it most in our society. God bless.